Joining me now are two more Democratic legislators who are taking a stand, Ohio Congresswoman Marsha Fudge and California Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Thank you both for being here uh, on this MLK weekend. Uh, I have to get each of you to comment. I'll start with you, uh, Congresswoman Lee, because I know that you were one of the earliest uh, members of the CBC to come out saying you're not going to go to the inauguration. Donald Trump um, took all of the bait and, and attacked John Lewis on the first day of the MLK weekend, and he is still coming for him. He tweeted last night about John Lewis. Congressman John Lewis should finally focus on the burning and crime-infested inner cities of U.S. I could use all the help I can get. He earlier disparaged uh, John Lewis's district in Georgia, which includes Buckhead. I mean, if you understand Atlanta, Buckhead is not a slum, but he, he disparaged his district. What do you make of this decision by the president-elect to attack civil rights icon John Lewis on MLK weekend? Uh, well, first I have to just say, Congressman Lewis is a moral, civil, and human rights leader. When Congressman John Lewis speaks, the world listens. Uh, Donald Trump uh, talked about Congressman Lewis, actually insulted him by saying he was all talk and no action. Well, Congressman Lewis led the effort for voting rights. He almost was killed as a result of his work. He continues to represent his district in a fantastic, brilliant way, bringing opportunities to his district. And he's a wonderful, effective legislator. And so for me, uh, Donald Trump has insulted one of our great leaders. And uh, we all should feel very, uh, you know, upset and angry about this insult to Congressman Lewis. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's a hashtag, Defend the Fifth, that's going around uh, from his Atlanta district uh, calling him a hero, which he is. Uh, his book is now selling out um, as people reacquaint themselves with his memoir and with his life. Congresswoman uh, Marsha Fudge, you know, we, we know that Congressman Lewis uh, is a longtime friend of the Clintons. We know that they are very good friends and have been for, you know, decades, really. Um, inside of the caucus, you're a former um, chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Is this being read as Congressman Lewis really being angry about what was done to his friend and that that's why he is uh, really being just so putting that hard line down on Donald Trump? Or is it something else? Because he's being attacked uh, as setting the wrong tone uh, as we head into the inauguration weekend. Well, first off, let me say thank you, Joy, uh, for having me. Uh, it is not something that John is doing because he's angry. If you listen to this person, uh, Mr. Trump, who has already made a mockery of our democracy, to attack a person whose actions have changed the course of this nation, then either he doesn't know history or he doesn't mm -hmm. care about it. Uh, because to be so ignorant as to say the words that he is all talk uh, is just ludicrous. Uh, secondly, if you remember MLK Day, in a letter from a Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King wrote that it is not the clanners who are impeding our democracy and our freedom. It is the moderate whites. He's talking about the Donald Trumps and the, and the John Sessions of the world who talk about order but never justice, who are silent on things that are important to people. So I think that John is just being the advocate he has always been. And he is saying what he believes to be true. And so do many other Americans believe that we have a president president, who if in fact it is proven, uh, has been assisted by the Russians and may in fact not be a legitimate president. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, when uh, John Lewis said these, made these comments to our own Chuck Todd, the interview was a, a lot longer than just that clip that people are playing. I want to play one more clip, uh, and this is uh, Chuck asked uh, Congressman Lewis about whether or not he would invite Donald Trump to Selma. Uh, let's take a listen, and then I'll get uh, you ladies' response. Would you take him to Selma? Well... By going to Selma, like President Bush, mm -hmm. President Clinton, President uh, Obama, maybe he would learn something. Maybe he would get religion. So you would bring him. You would. You would. You would do that for him if he asked. Well, I would not invite him to come. You wouldn't invite him. No. no. But if he asked to come, would you let him? I would. I wouldn't try to do anything to prevent him from coming. And Congresswoman Lee, uh, you know, we saw uh, the members of the Congressional Black Caucus and others stand up against uh, the certification of uh, Donald Trump uh, to be president. Uh, it's something that we saw before with President Bush. That happened in 2000, where members of the caucus, as well as others, stood up and said, you should not certify this man based on the way the Supreme Court intervened. Um, in the, but, but President Bush was invited. He did come to Selma. He did sort of try to forge something of a relationship. I mean, it was rocky uh, with the CBC. Do you see, foresee in any being able to come to even that level of accommodation with Donald Trump. And I'll ask each of these, I'll start with you, uh, Carl. Yes. 
You know, that's up to Donald Trump. And let me just say, I participate in the Selma uh, march and pilgrimage uh, almost every year with young people, and it's a very profound experience. You know, what is important, I think, is not just going to Selma, but what's important is who do you stand for? Are you going to fight for the most vulnerable? Are you going to make sure that uh, health care is provided for people who are at risk now of losing their health care? I think it's more about what do you do? What is your agenda? And the reason I'm not celebrating uh, at the inauguration is because up until now, uh, this effort, the, the campaign has been divisive. And what he continues to do is really stand for uh, the most wealthy in our country and not on the side of all Americans. And so it's basically, I think, what he intends to do as president. And I haven't seen yet that he's going to stand up for everyone. Yeah. Same question to you, Congresswoman Fudge. Uh, you know what, Joy, uh, the president-elect has said things like he's going to solve the problems of the inner city. Let him do it. Don't blame it on John Lewis. John has do done more for the city of Atlanta probably than any single individual. Uh, when you talk about whether he's going to be a person that I can support, how do you support a person who nominates a Jeff Sessions? How do you support a person who says that the Attorney General of the United States has only weighed in on voting rights when he thought that the Shelby decision was good news? Who has been silent on things like criminal justice? justice reform other than to say I'm opposed to consent decrees. How do you support somebody like a Jeff Sessions where he represents a state where 25 percent of all of his children go to segregated schools, but he's okay with that because the funding formula is fine with him. How do you yeah. support a person who's not an advocate and calls himself the Attorney General of the United States? If that yeah. is what we can expect, I don't think that we're going to be able to get along very well. Yeah, and uh, I have to play this one more uh sound. Um, this is Reince Priebus, who's been chosen as the next chief of staff. Uh, this is pretty extraordinary, um, talking about um, the respect that the Republicans at Reince Priebus and others would like to be shown to Donald Trump and whether or not that same respect was shown uh, to President Obama as he's elected. This is Reince Priebus on ABC earlier today. You didn't have Republicans questioning whether or not Obama legitimately beat John McCain in 2008. For a person that is a champion of voter rights to question whether or not Donald Trump legitimately won an election or not is an incredible position to take five days before an inauguration. And Congresswoman Lee, um, George Stephanopoulos then asked him, but wait a minute, you guys, you guys questioned Barack Obama's legitimacy, Republicans questioned his legitimacy, and Rice Reber said, oh, that's not the point. <laughs> Your thoughts? One of the reasons I challenged the certification of the Electoral College was because of foreign influence and Russian involvement in our elections, which the intelligence community has provided. And so, you know, the Russian interference, tampering with our elections, interfering with our democratic processes is, is very serious and it's very dangerous. And I'll conclude by saying I think we need a full investigation so the public can know just how legitimate these elections were, notwithstanding what the outcome was. We need to know how for a foreign power interfered in this election. And Congresswoman Fudge, just the irony of saying that John Lewis really shouldn't be challenging the legitimacy uh, of Donald Trump when Republicans did nothing but challenge Barack Obama's legitimacy and even his birth place um, for eight years. You know what, Joy, these are the things that make you laugh to keep from crying. I mean, when is enough enough? Just even this past week, we have Republicans standing in the well of the House excoriating this president. He is leaving, but it has not stopped for eight years, Joy. Every day we are floor. They have something negative to say. They question his legitimacy. They question his birthright. They question his intelligence. And so, Rich Priebus? That is the most hypocritical thing I've ever seen, I've ever heard. It is just ridiculous that yeah. he could say something like that with a straight face. He should be ashamed. And in the words of Donald Trump, it's just sad. Just sad. <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we, we were out of time. I know Congresswoman Lee is not going to be going to the inaugural. Uh, Congresswoman Fudge, are you planning to attend? No, I will be here in Cleveland. All right. Uh, we, you heard it here first. I think that's the first we've heard uh, of what it Congressman is. Fudge will be doing. Well, thank you for uh, breaking that news here on AM Joy. Thank you both to Representative Marsha.